Okay, here I'm going to cover different methods of detecting latent prints. Keep in mind latent prints are hidden prints, and while I'm going to describe many methods here, they're all not going to be used on the same print because depending on the surface or the conditions, that will dictate the best method to, to utilize, but being familiar with all of them will ensure you'll be able to select the correct method to best fit the situation. So first off, those latent prints are sometimes called the hidden prints, and they're caused by the transfer of oils and other bodily secretions onto a surface. They can be made visible by dusting with powders or by using chemical reaction. The location of the fingerprints is often the most challenging aspect when it comes to making them visible, because someone may touch an object, but then we have to go through later and be able to try to identify where those fingerprints are located and how best to make them visible. Now the age of the individual also impact the latent print. Children's fingerprints fade much more quickly than adults due to different oil composition before and after puberty. Before pu puberty, there's many small volatile uh, fatty acids that react very quickly and basically degrade. And post puberty, there's less volatile comp compounds that will be able to last longer. In general, warm temperatures also only accelerate the degradation process, so that's important to keep in mind. And this has implications because when children are involved in crimes, because the fingerprints that they leave behind uh, may have faded by the time police arrive to be able to dust for them. So just because you couldn't find them doesn't mean they necessarily weren't initially made. Now the surface determines the method. So hard, not absorbing surfaces such as metal, plastic, and glass, these have a nice contrast of um, contrasting or magnetic powder can really be able to identify those pretty easily. Also, you can use UV light sources and super glow. Soft, porous surfaces such as paper, uh, cloth, or cardboard. You can use iodine fuming, uh, neohydrin, or uh, gen violet, or crystal violet as well. So again, knowing the surface determines the method you should be utilizing. So the fingerprint powder, which is uh, the basics of just using fingerprint powder, come in more colors than just black, so it associates it just automatically as black, um, to allow for improved contrast for photographing purposes depending on the color of the surface. So if it's a white surface, sure, you want to use black. But if it's a different colored surface, this is why there's different colored powders. The goal is to gently apply a fine coating of non to a non-absorbing surface. Uh, do not press very hard or over apply the powder as this can damage the actual prints. It's a very kind of delicate task. Uh, it takes a little practice, but usually less and lighter is better than harder and more. The powder will stick to the perspiration residues of the body and the oils. And this is why if you apply too much or add too much friction, you'll damage these um, small amount of oil that is left. There's fingerprint powder options. Uh, we also have fluorescent options. These use the um, use of UV light can help create a stark contrast when the print's uh, surface may not be a solid color. For example, it's on a plaid surface. This can allow for a quality image to be taken. Then there's magnetic powders, which are best utilized on surfaces that are glossy, such as plastic, but can be used as the same as regular powders. So a lot of times people just get the magnetic powder because it can be applied to both situations. Those UV light sources, allow for quick identification of prints uh, in the location of where they may be found. This can be applied to specific locations of where prints may be found. Uh, this method works on non-absorbent surfaces and does not alter the prints since the light is simply reflected back causing a visual contrast. So this is typically good to use here, for example we see the glass, to initially find where they may be located and then other methods could be implement, implemented once you know the specific location of those prints. So here we're looking at the superglue method or the cyanoacrylate method. This method works best on non-porous surfaces such as metals, plastic, and leathers. It's basically superglue, and what happens is it's put on a hot plate to create vapors that will polymerize the print. However, what makes this a little bit of a challenging is those vapors need to be kept in a contained area. So this is great for objects that can be moved. Uh, this does require that enclosed environment to isolate those toxic vapors. Uh, resulting latent print will be white in color, as we see right uh, next to me here, uh, but enhancing the, the patterns can be added for documentation and analysis. So once you kind of get that initial kind of print made, then you can utilize powders in addition. Uh, there's iodine fuming, which as the name implies, uh, we're kind of creating a fume uh, from iodine uh, from the solid crystals that when heated will sublime, means that they go directly to a vapor without going 
passing through a liquid phase. This also requires enclosed environment uh, because these vapors are toxic and they combine with oils and the latent prints to produce a visual brownish print. However, the print can fade quickly, so immediate um, photography of those prints needs to be made unless it's sprayed with a fixing solution, which is typically made of 1% starch solution that will turn the prints blue, allowing them to be uh, potentially last for several weeks. We see the comparison here of how they initially look after iodine fuming and then after they're being fixed, the color that they turn. Then we have the neohydrin which is ineffective at binding to the amino acids in the fingerprint residues. The goal is to spray a mist on the evidence, and the fingerprints will be turned into a permanent pinky, kind of purple color, as we see here, uh, fairly quickly. However, it takes precautions as the substance is toxic, so it's not something you just want to use uh, in general, it's something that you do want to be careful with when you are utilizing it, but you can see here it can make prints uh, very easily visible to see some of the key characteristics. And here we're seeing gentian violet, or more commonly known as crystal violet. Crystal violet is a dye that will transfer visible color to the fatty components of the sebaceous sweat residue and latent prints. It's highly concentrated, intense purple images are produced. You can see just what those look like here. It's very effective on items having a sticky adhesive quality, for example, if it prints on tape. And crystal vial is also affected on grease and oil contaminated surfaces. And there's instructions uh, included to be able to go through and identify those and follow those protocols um, so you can get the best visible aspect of these latent prints. And lastly here we have silver nitrate. Uh, objects can be dipped or sprayed with a silver nitrate solution. Uh, the chlorides from the salt and perspiration on the print will combine with the silver nitrate, produce a black to kind of reddish print that can be visible under a UV light. Uh, it's used to lift prints from styrofoam and wood surfaces, but be careful because this does a stain and is not necessarily the best material to be working with um, as far as coming in contact with. As far as being able to identify prints, uh, it has a great purpose for that.